it's just kind of like a way to like you duct tape it together and it like it works but it's not pretty but it gets yeah, the yeah. job done it's one of those things you know like it's a it's a clutch it's like a temporary mm -hmm. solution Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today we're here with Kludge, talented artist that I've been following on Instagram a little bit. I'm excited to finally connect and chat with him. So how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about you? Not bad. Uh, it actually feels pretty good to be recording around now. Uh, it's a little bit later than usual, but now I'm fully awake <laughs> and everything. Don't got to worry about any oh, of that. That's good. I yeah, I rescheduled on you. I didn't know if like what your your preferred time to do it was. Yeah, I don't know. Like I've realized that a lot of times when I do this stuff after I'm done recording, I'm pretty like tired just from talking so much and kind of drained that even if I do it earlier in the day, the rest of that day still feels kind of like it's done, you know? Like it's I don't want to really do <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I do that stuff like this for sure cuz I always want to be like extra present because it's some you know talking about stuff i actually care about yeah but even just like the random like work meeting you know it'll like i'm always i always like underestimate how exhausted i'm gonna be right after that stuff and being present and talking and like all i did was like sit and like chat with like five random people for an hour and i'm just like mm -hmm. that's like that's all I got and then I'm trying to like make art or do design stuff later and it just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird too like when I was working at my last job um there's different you know different meetings are about different things obviously and there were some where they were more I guess like not on the creative um it's part of the business so like I'm just kind of there and like not really it's all about like logistics or whatever and I was just not yep. doing anything for like an hour and then I was thinking like damn, like if you really looked at the eight hour work day, I'm probably only doing shit for like five hours with all these meetings and like nonsense going on. I mean, there's like, I don't there's all, that's a whole thing, like not to get too down that rabbit hole, but like just different jobs and different things where people like, that's what they do like all day. I'm actually yeah. like, I think at a point with like my regular, like I have a, you know, normal day job. I'm actually at my office right now. Because, yeah, it looks like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm at my work setup, which I haven't hardly been here during COVID because I've been, I've been working remote. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have dogs at home and they suck at doing interviews and they're loud and noisy. So I was trying to go here yeah. where it might be quiet. But um, I'm like transitioning into like at work, a new role where I'm doing more like managerial stuff and like meetings. Mm -hmm. And it's still getting used to that mindset shift of going from just being a graphic designer where like, yeah. I only felt like I was truly working when I was like grinding out whatever the package design or logo or whatever, all the stuff and like doing the hours of design right. design and then like getting used to being like, no, somebody, I mean, some of it's, a lot of it's bullshit and that's <laughs> like, that's yeah. part of it too. And like I, a lot of it's absurd, but there are parts of it. Like somebody's just got to organize and like somebody's got to make the call to that, that lady or like that guy right. or set up the thing and mm -hmm. like counting that is work <laughs> yeah it's crazy like i remember working uh i worked at this company called like art of sport so we did um it was like uh what do you call it cpg so like um deodorant body wash like all this stuff for like athletes and it was like partnered with kobe and all these people and yeah we would uh there was days where it was just like a small team for how big we were and our presence were like in the media, but there was only like eight of us. So yeah, I'd be designing packaging or whatever, but our social media stuff. But the next day, sometimes I would spend all day, like going to the printer's place, like trying to figure shit out, like emailing this supplier person. And I was just like, I have no idea how to do any of this. Like they just <laughs> like, were like, you could do this. Right. I was like, I guess like, I don't totally. know, I'll figure it out. I do love seeing that stuff where like big companies, especially like, they have a really solid image and they seem so larger than life, but then talking mm -hmm. to people that are inside it and can give you like that inside scoop of, yeah. I don't know. I feel like the common refrain at most places is like, no one has any idea what we're doing and we're just making this shit up like every day and just scrambling. Mm -hmm. But to like the outside world, it's like, oh, that's like, a, that's the real deal. That's the place. Yeah. And it's crazy <laughs> how once you start work, like the difference between, you know, working on your own art or working as a freelancer to like working as an employee is you do so much like 
yeah, as a freelancer, I do a lot of managerial stuff too and like business and, and money tax and whatnot, but yeah. it feels better because like it's going towards like your own development. It's not like someone else's business, you know? So like. Totally. I mean, it's always hard to like do that more boring stuff at a place where you're like, I don't know, I don't get anything from this. <laughs> like this yeah. isn't my like profit. I, you know, you get your paycheck and you're obviously trying to do your job the best right. you can, but like. It's very different when you're like, oh, if I crush it on this, like on my accounting for my own thing, like something like, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> I always wondered how yeah. performance, like uh, how jobs would change in the level of performance if like every job, you know, like every employee at that job got, you know, rewarded for like doing more or working harder. Like if, you know the reports come in like Q2 or whatever, we sold this much more. Like if the people that were working on it got paid more, I'm sure it would just make the company even bigger because they would just work I mean, even harder and harder. I mean, I get like way too deep into that. So like, I just overthink it. Well, I don't like overthink. I guess everybody thinks about it a lot, especially now. Cause like just capitalism and yeah. the way things run and everything's on fire and sucks. And I don't know, like, yeah, it's, it's very real. And yeah, I do spend so much time like thinking about like all these managers or bosses or CEOs or people asking all these people below them to do all the actual work, create all the actual goods, all the actual product, put in all the actual hours, like, mm -hmm. but then never realizing, I'm like, how do they not realize? Like, like, I think they get baffled when they're like, oh, these people don't want to work, you know, yeah. like, they just don't want to work. And it's like, well, you don't, you know, obviously like so many people don't get paid enough to like live. Right. And then beyond that, I'm like, yeah, their incentives are completely different than like these owners or whoever, you know, or anybody that gets actual like profit coming to them. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just seen that like, you know, throughout my life, people, people in charge being confused as to like why people below them, like don't want it as bad or whatever. Like they have these right. ideas about these workers. I'm like, well, dude, like <laughs> they get yeah, paid like, like no money and they're doing all the actual labor for you of like yeah it's it's completely different right and that's your know. dream you know they're working on your dream not their <laughs> own so like totally and also like uh i feel like i think that's why companies uh that operate with someone that maybe has like a more inspiring like background or like worked their way up through this some whatever ladder feel Maybe like the employees have more respect for them rather than like some, you know, they bring in some random like hot shot, like CEO Silicon Valley yeah. dude. Like it's like, no, they're not going to care about you, you know, because you didn't, no. you weren't there like when they were doing the bullshit and whatnot. Totally. Well, I just think, I mean, I think we're all thinking about it a ton and like just these old school hierarchies and the way any of this stuff works is so, I think it's just so much more, I guess it's always been visible. But I know, like, I guess I can only speak for myself personally, but, like, mm -hmm. I've just seeing it and noticing it all so much more clearly, you know, in this day and age of, like, this, like, one guy, usually a guy, like, some fucking dude at most of these places, you know, is, like, in charge at the top, gets all the credit, you know, gets all the, like, mm -hmm. credited as, like, the innovator, the design genius or the inventor and all this stuff. And it's, like, these massive companies and it's so absurd to ever like try to boil it down to like one man's like whether it's Steve Jobs or whoever or like now you know like Elon Musk and all this and it's mm -hmm. like not to say that like people can't have good ideas and be smart or like do a thing well but then like we're going to boil down this like entire giant operation and all these minds and all this work that people did to like that guy's so sick. Like he's so yeah. good at cars or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that doesn't like this. Like, why are we talking like this? <laughs> right. There's always like, uh, I mean, it's, if it's rare for someone to do that, that something that big on their own, maybe it starts out that way, but then they got to assemble the, the Avengers, you know, and all that and put the team together. Yeah. And then like right down to like, the most important jobs are usually like who comes in and like cleans the place and like makes it inhabitable and like you could work there the next day. It's the janitors and like right. the lowest level people doing all this amazing work. But it's just these guys, yeah, like running around doing like TV interviews and shit and getting credited for being geniuses for, you know, like it's not to say anybody that, you know, becomes a head of a company or anything is like 
didn't have some good ideas or work hard to like get it going and all that. Mm-hmm. But I just think we have these, I don't know, we, we condense it all down to like these people as symbols or like yeah. geniuses and all that. I'm like, I think it's just like, that's just like a, a, a person. Yeah. <laughs> like good, bad it's, and in between. Like said, it's just like, one of them. <laughs> it's just some dude. Like that's everything. Everything is just some dude usually. <laughs> some and like, dude, some woman, some person, some human, whatever that is. But yeah. yeah, it's like we try to put all of this like hopes and dreams and stuff into like one person it's like well we gotta we gotta calm down <laughs> like yeah it's, i don't know that's how i feel when i watch uh it's like a not exact analogy but when i watch the mic'd up like sports shit i'm just like damn these are just some dudes like talking shit <laughs> like normal people like you think that they're like you know not human sometimes because of like the shit that they're doing but then when they're just talking to each other it's hella like oh, totally. casual and weird yep I also like, I don't know. I mean, I grew up playing hockey and so like I'm pretty like well-versed in that culture and Mm -hmm. so much of it just sucks. Like so much of it, I love hockey. I've met a bunch of people that are amazing in hockey, but there's also so much just like terrible bro culture and just like, Mm I don't know. I, I just think sometimes with people with like athletes, especially they get really surprised when like some athlete has some shitty view or says some dumb thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm not like, I don't know if people are surprised. I think people just call it out, which they should call it out when it happens. But especially with hockey, I'm just always like, yeah, like that's. Yeah. That's those that's guys. Not, like I've, I've been there, man. Like they're that's not like all every, like. Uh, <laughs> everything that's not like, I don't know, if you're not like a politician or some kind of, you know, great thinker and you have the level of fame, if not more than those people that are supposed to be like talking to people, what do you expect? You know, like people are going to say, if I was, if I had as much reach as like, you know, LeBron or some shit, I'd probably have said the dumbest shit ever and everyone would hate me, you know? I know. I do look at guys (laughs) like that and I try to like, I don't know. I don't know that much about LeBron, but I think he's like pretty well respected as far as like, Mm. he's not like a horrible monster person. Like so many other people have shown to be. But I always look at him. I think somebody else pointed this out. It's not my idea. But I think they said, like, it's amazing. Like, him come. He's been, like, a phenom since he was, like, 10 years old. And mm-hmm. been, like, TV cameras pointed at him and doing interviews and having to talk all this time and be the greatest basketball player ever for so long. The fact that he's, like, just even halfway decent yeah, is almost, like, impressive, like, to do all of that for so long. Especially when... Like I heard another thing I heard the other day, somebody talking about they were they're saying they're like I'm so glad I didn't get oh it was on the maintenance phase podcast and they were talking about I think it was Aubrey Gordon was talking about like I'm so glad I didn't get any like fame or recognition or like whatever level she mm-hmm. has now she's like in my 20s like I'm so glad like I started to get that in my 30s yeah not that like in your 20s you can't but she's like I was so like all the shit I might've said at like 19, 20 years old. Yeah. And to be like, have that blown up around the world. She's like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. For real, it'd be like, that's a challenging, you know, feat for anyone. Just cause like, you know, the higher the volume you're, you're, you're out there, the more higher percentage you're going to, you know, make, make a mistake or whatever. That's just human totally. nature. I wanted to ask you, um, that was like, you know, kind of a small tangent on that stuff. Yeah, but, sorry. We uh, should talk about art. The one thing, like, <laughs> I don't think I'm qualified necessarily, but maybe the only thing I spend all my time on that I can yeah. talk about properly. It's all good, man. <laughs> what what uh, what kind of stuff are you doing then at your actual job? Because I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the art stuff you're posting, but is it, um, it's like beer, right? Or something? Yeah. So I work at, uh, here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm at this company called Fulton Brewing, and I am the marketing mm. manager now. Okay. Previously, I was the graphic designer, but now I'm like managing the marketing, which sounds like a bigger deal than it is. It's me and another person doing the marketing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so yeah, it's doing a lot of like basic, you know, graphic design. Uh, obviously, packaging stuff for cans and boxes and all that. Mm-hmm. Some social media, some website, just like a mix of, you know, we're a not a tiny company, but obviously not a huge massive company either so yeah what's kind of uh some of your background then in like art and design because obviously you know i meet people that do stuff more like that you post online that's like a little bit more abstract and experimental that that also have jobs like what you're working and then some that don't that just are artists for lack of a better word you know and they're not actually like 
in like a, what do you want? Like a, a designer in the, you know, world or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, what's kind of your background and how did you get into both those two separate things that you work on? Yeah. I, I mean, I toggle back and forth, obviously. I, the stuff, yeah, like I show on my Instagram that you've seen, I'm sure is, yeah, more on that, the kludge stuff, mm-hmm. all the art stuff that I'm into. That's definitely what I'm like showing um, right. the most. The design stuff I do, I mean, I like a lot of it, but I don't, I don't know, I guess I try to like compartmentalize the two and keep them separate just to keep my sanity a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I guess the way I got started, um, I guess as a kid, obviously I drew a bunch and was, you know, like most of us designers, artists, whatever, like often had like a pencil and paper and was trying to draw stuff. I was always drawing hockey players off like, you know, old hockey cards and shit like that. Yeah. I was like sitting around at grandma's drawing pictures. Uh, did the thing where went to school, didn't exactly know what to go for, but like a lot of us, it was kind of the, well, I like art, but the way you get paid for art is a thing called graphic design. So I heard, so we <laughs> yeah. sign up for it and do it <laughs> um, for good, better and worse. Mm-hmm. And then I, so I did uh, school at, I went to University of Central Oklahoma, uh, studied graphic design there, got my degree in that, and then came back home to Minnesota where I'm from originally. And I didn't go immediately into design stuff. I was doing some screen printing for like client work, just like printing t-shirts for people, stuff like that Mm -hmm. for a bit and doing a bunch of that and kind of freelancing a little with some design, but not too much. And then started working at a couple different places and eventually landed here for for that. Okay. So you've been at that job for a while now? Uh, yeah, three years. Three years, so not, okay. Not super long, but yeah, I feel pretty cozy now. Yeah. When did you start um, kind of developing out like the kludge um, world of like your craft and like that persona or whatever you want to call it? So I'd say the kludge, I guess it starts at the end of college. So I was graduating in 2014 Mm -hmm. and I decided to do a like year long project. Like I'd seen some people do where you do one thing every day, which Mm -hmm. I like just was going to do one this year and then bailed on it like super quick. (laughs) Yeah, that shit's hard. (laughs) Partly because I was, I mean, I was like feeling good about it and it kind of jump started me to do some stuff I needed to do, but and immediately like got the flu and was like throwing up for a few days and then my printer broke and I could yeah. print my acetate films and screen print. I was like, this is fun. Also, apart. I just want to say real quick for anyone that's ever wanted to do that or felt discouraged by not being able to do that. Everyone I know that's ever completed that was like in school still and didn't have a job and stuff. So like, don't yeah. worry about it too much, I guess. <laughs> or just like, you got to set those parameters up of like, it's almost like you have to pick what you're going to do, whether it's how many days you do it or how many things you make or like whatever the sequence is, mm-hmm. or if it is daily, it's like you almost have to assume it's going to be like double or triple the time allotted than you think right. and like approach it that way. Mm-hmm. Cause it's just like, you're going to run into a hurdle. I don't, then again, who knows? Like I might just be lazy yeah. or incompetent. Other people pull off amazing shit that I can't pull off. So. That's true. Maybe I'm like <laughs> not giving it enough credit, but from my from no, who I, I've yeah. talked to, small sample size, they were like students and things. So, but I, um, I hear you. And so actually, so the first one I ever did, I did like, oh, I'm gonna do like make something every day for a year project. Yeah. And it was also I don't know. It was like I was finishing design school, and then as that was happening, I got like super terrified that I now had to leave school, which I don't know was mostly really fun. Like I liked being in college and like hanging right. out with my friends and making Same. student projects. It was a good time. It was stressful, but also mostly super fun. Um, and I got like super terrified that I was like, oh, I have to go like work at some ad agency now. Like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> like, some mad is... men shit. <laughs> yeah. I had like an <laughs> internship that sucked. I had one that was really good and cool and the guy was super nice and I worked, he was a smaller company and he was really, mm-hmm. it was just, it was solid and he was really good to me. And then I did this other internship at this ad agency down in Oklahoma and I was just like, they just... I mean, I'm sure it's many people's experience where like you're just unpaid labor, right? like you're in there to like resize a bunch of ads and make a bunch of shit and get no pay mm-hmm. and like just be treated like dirt by like half the people. Yeah. I will say there was, I always like to clarify, like if I tell anybody about this place, I'm not gonna like name it obviously, but a bunch of people were super cool to me and awesome. And like some of the other designers were awesome and they taught me stuff and they were really nice to me. They took me out for lunch. Like it was cool. 
And then there was like enough people there, including some people that were in charge, so to speak, mm-hmm. that were just so like, what are you doing? Like watching a video while you eat your lunch, you're supposed to be making those logos or like just crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. I just had one of those experiences where I was like, oh man, is this like the jobs I'm supposed to go into? So I was like about right. to graduate and just like, oh God, I don't know if I could, I might've made a huge mistake with this graphic design thing. Yeah. <laughs> and after like finishing the degree, it's like, well, this is a bad time to figure that out. So I think I started that like year long project partly to just like make art. I was just like mm-hmm. needed to do something. I hadn't ever really like called myself an artist or ever like that seems super scary to me to like use that word even and say I'm an artist. Like it just seemed Mm -hmm. way too important or way too like something I didn't deserve. So I think that was like that project was me starting to like give myself some permission to like just make some stuff. It's not for a client. It's not for a job. It's not anything just with it. And I was like trying to illustrate more than, but play with type, just do whatever. I was like, just make something every day for a year. And through Mm -hmm. that process, it got me to start feeling more comfortable of like, oh, maybe like me making stuff just because and me being like an artist is, it might not like pay my bills or anything yet, but like it's a worthwhile endeavor and I can yeah I can say it or stand behind it. So that's kind of like the very beginning of like the clutch before I like use that name. Um, and What's then it grew. The, why is the name that? I think I read something, yeah. but I'd want to hear you explain it a little bit. Okay. Um, I learned the, well, I mean, it's a word that, people know some obvious word that's out there it's like slang though yeah kind of yeah and i don't know exactly like the origin or anything but i first heard that from my friend dan abara who mm. he used to be at this place called aesthetic apparatus here in minneapolis um okay. they did like a bunch of cool like gig posters and stuff a lot of people know them um so i graduated college and i came home partly because dan abara And this other guy, Zach Sally, who does comics, who's another friend of mine now and does these amazing comics. They started this program called Schoolhouse, which was like, God, not to try to explain Schoolhouse, but it was basically like, I mean, it was a school where we like learn things. There's like 12 of us and the two teachers, Dan and Zach. Okay. Um, We attended that and it was like all these artists and a bunch of my like best friends here in Minneapolis now are because I went to the Schoolhouse program and met them there. Oh, okay. Um, but so Dan Abara, one of the, the teachers at the schoolhouse program, he was the first one that ever said the word kludge. And I mm-hmm. honestly, I can't remember exactly what he was referencing it. Maybe if he was even talking about me or my work or just other stuff. But I remember yeah, just yeah. really liking that word kludge. And it was just like a way to describe like, just kind of a like half ass, like mm. rigged up thing, like it's just kind of like a way to like you duct tape it together and like it works, but it's not pretty, but it gets the job done. It's one of those things, you know, like it's a, it's a kludge. It's like a temporary Mm -hmm. solution. What's the, um, I think if you Google it, it has like a better, I use that, like the one I found on Wikipedia or something for like, that's like, like my dad and like my grandpa, they'd be like, yeah, we just Jimmy rigged it or some shit. You know, totally. There's like different phrases for that, but I heard this word kludge and I was like, that sounds good. An um, ill-assorted collection of parts assembled to fulfill a particular purpose. Yeah. Okay. So a couple years. That's good though. It's it's good. (laughs) I'm glad you like it. Thank you. I mean, it's not my word, but like, I guess you like that I've stolen it. It's funny because it fits the, (laughs) it fits like the vibe of the stuff that you create, but also not to say like it's, it's, it's a, it almost fits it, but it almost doesn't because I feel like the solutions that you came up with deserve more credit than just saying that they're illy, illy put together or whatever. Yeah, but just like I like the sentiment of it, you know? I think the thing for me is like why I liked it and why I was like, I wanted to like have an artist name or whichever, which always, it feels so, it's like fun to do, feels like insane to talk about out loud. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, as silly as all this stuff is, but whatever. Um, I think I like... I really like things that like lower the pressure level for me. Yeah. I think that's something with my, especially just who I am. I just, I overthink everything and I get too stressed or I get too worried. I put too much pressure on myself or I feel like other people are, even though they're usually not. So yeah. I think the idea of like, well, I'm just going to make a kludge 
you know, it's not like a painting. It's not a collage right. even. It's not anything like it takes away all the like connotations I have in my brain of better people making better things. And mm-hmm. it like gives me a little bit of permission, I guess, in my head to be like, well, you just said you're going to make a clutch. So like, if it sucks, it's okay. Don't worry. And it like, right. I think just to like, let me get started. It like, it helps. I don't know. It's kind of a win-win like uh, mentality because if it, if people don't like it, you just say, oh, it's just a clutch though. Like it, it's just a work in progress or whatever. Yeah. And then if, if it's good, they're like, damn, that's pretty dope for a clutch, you know? So it's like, <laughs> yeah, they- <laughs> either way you kind of win. <laughs> It's kind of like, yeah, if you put it that way, it's maybe it's just like a good, it's kind of a cop out where it's just like, I don't have to put it on the line ever. I can just feel like. That's how I feel when I post something online. I'll just say like, uh, like, I feel like I use it too much, maybe in the way that you use the word kledge, but I'm like, oh, this is an experiment, you know, like, because totally. like once it's not an experiment, then someone can say like, you didn't do that right or something or like, totally. it's not official. But I think that works because if you call it the experiment and then like if it goes really well, it's not like if you had set out and said, I'm going to make the best shit ever and then yeah. you can make the best shit ever. It's like if the outcome's the same and it just like takes that, I guess for me, yeah, it's like a pressure thing. I think it's just like mm-hmm. it turns the dial down a bit on the pressure and just like lets you breathe and like, I don't know. I think I think that's one of my like big overarching like philosophies or I guess things I think about while I make stuff these days. It's just, I think everybody is under so much pressure. Everything's made really hard Mm -hmm. on purpose, it seems like. And I guess like if anybody, like I'm always quick to say, like if anything I say, if somebody thinks like the exact opposite, like especially with art stuff for sure, but like if they think the exact opposite of what I say, like, that's awesome. Good for you. Go do that. Like, at least I said the thing that you knew it was like, I hate that. That sucks. I'm going to do the opposite yeah. thing. But if anybody ever listens to like anything I say is like an artist or like likes what I'm doing, I guess that's like the one thing I always want to encourage is just like turn down the pressure, like relax, find those spaces, like trying to, I guess, like in small ways, if I can be a role model Mm-hmm. Of like, oh, this person's found a way to like make this a little bit easier, a little bit lighter, a yeah. little bit less heavy, you know, and less stressful. And at least if nothing else, it's like a great way to open a door for someone that maybe, you know, because I'm sure you get this too. People come and, you know, they ask about like, how do I, you know, get started doing this? Or I want to try that style or I want to do this or yeah. that. And one of the main things I want to impart on people is like first off like take a deep breath and just like enjoy it and have fun and like yeah the hour that you spend today like whether it's you know painting or doodling or doing design should be like the therapeutic meditative like beautiful time right you know because like i just think everybody's got a lot going on and life's tough and like Mm -hmm. art art should not have to be another thing that's super hard on everybody right i think I, i get those messages more and more it seems and sometimes like they're really long and and not any fault to the person like I've been there I could imagine them typing this like kind of manically or whatever you know and like (laughs) stressed out about their university or whatever it may be yep and I'm just kind of like I don't know you know like I don't even know any like I don't know it's like I try to help but I'm just they're like should I go to school or like how did you find a style or like how do you do this like this this guy said I'm worried about going to the graphic design because I heard that they don't make money and I'm like well sometimes they don't so I don't know what to say man like it's like it's like anything You, you have to be you can be good at anything you know and make it work like I think if you follow my advice loosely is like if you follow what you enjoy doing the money will hopefully follow that you know like for the most part it seems to work out if you really just I'm not gonna say like just you can't just manifest everything obviously but if you do something you love it's more than likely gonna work out and even if it doesn't at least you enjoyed it versus you can do something you don't like and that's still not work out so it's like you might as well do something cool I mean that's always a huge scary thing like I always think about that for sure of like you spend a bunch of time doing that thing you actually don't kind of like because you think it's safe and then it turns out to not even be safe and you're like, yeah, shit, like that's like everyone whammy. during <laughs> the pandemic, you know, everyone got like, fired and they're like, yeah. oh, what? I thought this was like how you do it to not get fired, like to have money, you know? 
yeah, like you abandon all that stuff you love to do this like safe thing and then that blows up too and you're like, oh shit, like I had a terrible time and now I'm like still screwed. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't sure. know. Yeah. I mean, advice is always tough. Yeah. Cause I always feel I'm like, like they're sitting, like you were saying, they're asking like, should I go to school? And that's like such a huge question. I'm like, I don't want to answer that, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess I try to like, I don't know. I don't think I'm someone that really unless it's like my close friends maybe that I know really well should like, most people shouldn't be like taking my advice probably. Yeah. So I try to keep it loose and just be like, I can be a, try to be a decent role model and like show you things that have worked for me is all I can really do. But I also can't say that like what works for me works for anybody else. You know, right. It's all individual. I was just thinking too about like how sometimes I don't want anyone to take my advice like too literally. It's the same as, kind of this idea of like experiments or kludge or whatever, like when someone tells you something and then they just say, but I don't know, you know, like you could look, do your own research or whatever, or like look it up <laughs> yourself. Cause that's kind of like the, you just throw that last little that's the uh, caveat safety of the net, you know, in there yeah. for yourself. I do that all the time where I'm like, I mean, I even do that at work where I'm just like, I think we should do this, this and this. And then everyone's like, yeah, that sounds great. And I'm like, but also I'm super stupid and no one should listen to me or like, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. but maybe we should do the exact opposite of what I just said. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <It's, laughs> then I've I also learned, like, I'm like, that's not helpful to anybody. So I should just not say anything if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. Like if you would have just cut it off, they would have been ready to go and yeah. execute your plan. I'm just like, um, just I, like I, what I've been liking it too, about some of the stuff you've been, I'm looking at it right now that you've been posting lately is even less. Like I think people get, concerned with like social media and stuff and like posting these you know finish art pieces and and all this stuff and like very like it's really hard to keep up with this idea of you have to always be active but then also post yeah. stuff that's quality but like you're posting these uh photos of your sketchbooks and things and you've somehow made it feel like it's all in the same like world you know it doesn't feel like you have this finished art piece or kludge and then the next one's like a photo of your sketchbook but it still feels connected and i feel like people can learn from that because you could post like you know stuff you're still working on or like screen grabs of shit or like photos of your workspace like i think we as designers and artists and things get so concerned with like social media and stuff and act like everything has to be like our portfolio or some shit you know but it's not um I'm I'm really thank you. I'm really glad that you feel that way because I definitely do have like I struggle with that just like everybody else, I think. Mm -hmm. Um I think I'm getting better at it. Especially lately though, I've been thinking a lot about how much whether it's Instagram or whatever else, I guess it's mostly Instagram for me. Yeah. Is like how much power it has over what I do and what I make. And that doesn't right. have to all be bad. Like there's parts of like using Instagram like there's a million terrible things I could say about it and have been said a million times about whether well, it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but there's parts of it. And I'm like, like I wouldn't be talking to you if I wasn't on there. Like I've met, I have right. other like, you know, online like art friends and shit that I've talked to and gotten advice from or talked to about how they make their stuff. Like mm -hmm. there is that part if I choose to interact with it that way. But there's also the part of it that I always have to be like careful about that's like, how much it guides my hand and kind of tells me what to do and yeah. what to make and how to do it. And so I guess I will say that like, I'm trying to loosen up and I'm glad that you feel that way that I'm like mixing in process stuff with finished stuff yeah. or like, this is something that's, you know, but I still struggle if I make something that doesn't look enough, like other things I've made, I feel like weird mm -hmm. putting that out. Cause you're like, well, it doesn't fit in the set, you know? And like the portfolio right. doesn't look right. And it's like, I am trying to really, keep working on breaking that mindset and like being an artist in the real physical world first and foremost and spending most of my time and putting my attention there and like mm -hmm. that's that and then like making the portfolio side of it or the instagram side of it or even the website side of it like the secondary part of like once right. i've already done that and lived it you know and enjoyed making it and it was like that was the primary motivator then I feel okay about, well, yeah, go post it on Instagram, like, but just don't, don't get right. caught up, like thinking that's what it's about. That's just, and that's just for me, like mm -hmm. everybody's got their own way of dealing with that stuff, but I definitely have that struggle of it should fit in a grid and it's gotta be the same style. And then I do see like 
other amazing artists that do such cool stuff and they have like a really distinct like color palette they always stick with. Yeah. And I look at that stuff and like, I think I do, I do that thing way too often where I'm like feeling really good and like in my zone. I'm like, I'm making stuff. I'm feeling good every day. Like I'm just going to keep doing this. And then I open up Instagram and see like this artist I follow or a new artist maybe shows up and I'm like, yeah, I got to scrap all the stuff I'm doing and start over and be, you know, like try to do what they do. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, stop, stop. Like, don't, I can't have to yeah. like block those thoughts out. Like, it's cool that they're doing their thing. You can keep doing yours. Like, that's fine. Stop. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Comparison is like the thief of joy, you know? And totally. I think that social media just amplifies that, but. It also, you know, I think the main issue is what you were saying is that's good is, you know, the social part of the word social media. But I think the reason that, you know, it feels maybe more insidious these days is the social part is getting smaller and the media part is getting bigger because everything is just fucking ads and like bullshit, you know, like it's like uh and I don't know. I, I don't really want to talk about it too much because it's no, like no, whatever. I, all I do, all I do forever, sometimes yeah. is feel like as I complain about that shit, but as, as is everyone else. But I think it's good that, yeah, like, like why I brought that up is uh, everyone from the best artists to the people just starting out, I think needs to tone it down a little bit on like putting so much pressure on this shit. Like, it's just like, I, I almost sometimes in a weird way, I'm like, not jealous because like I love doing what I'm doing, but people that just go on there and they're like, Oh, I just deleted it or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but I can't really, I don't think I could just do that maybe, but it, I feel like I get money sometimes from it. So. I mean, you got to find that balance and like, I don't know. I think like all this stuff, like most of the stuff we interact with, I mean, you can go back before all the social media and computers in general. Like I think TV was the same way as like, as far as a technological shift in culture mm -hmm. where like, TV came along and all of a sudden like this very convenient form of entertainment was blasted into people's living rooms that wasn't there before. I guess, you know, it went from like ra reading radio, like yeah. there's always been stuff like this. I guess I think of TV just as a poignant, similar example of like this stuff shows up and it starts like influencing and changing the culture. And it's, it has this level of convenience that isn't like inherently evil on its own right, or anything like but then you just got to like always check in with it and be like, why am I, you know, I'm sure years ago people were like buying different outfits because like Johnny Carson or whoever the fuck dressed a certain way or like, yeah. you know, and then it's like, you got to stop and check like, okay, wait, why do I want that? It's not even that you can't want it. Like if you do, that's fine sometimes, like most things, but it's mm -hmm. always like, I find it's good to stop and check in with myself. Like who's behind this? Why are they doing this? Are they making money off this? Like, what is this? Why do I feel this way? And yeah. not so I have to like be completely like absolute one way or the other about anything. Like I just, mm -hmm. it's just, I find that balance of like, okay, I can deal with this thing. I can accept its faults and it's parts of it that I hate. But if I'm conscious and like in control of my own mind and my brain on a daily basis, I can like hopefully mostly take the good and right. see the bad, but not like be taken down and like, you know, pulled down the rabbit hole with it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now we all carry like phones everywhere or TVs everywhere, you know, basically. I mean, that's like obviously <laughs> uh, the craziest, it's just always there, always there, always there. That's like, did, um, yeah. uh, real quick, I just wanted to tell you, I don't know if you are familiar, but I did this video about it and I, it's from this book that I read. It's called like digital minimalism. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Like, um, there's this guy named like Cal Newport. He's super dope. He invented like the idea of like this deep work and like uninterrupted stuff and like less technology and things. I haven't read his book, but I've heard of this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His his yep. digital minimalism book though is dope because like basically what out. it is is what you were saying is like it's not about, you know, taking away all the stuff that you benefit from it, but it's about identifying like the pros and cons to like is having even the, you know, Twitter app on my phone, does the stuff I consume on there outweigh, like not maybe not being able to post on there as much, you know? And it's about like figuring out what's the minimum you can use these things and still get the most benefit out of, out of them, you know, like 80% totally. output, maybe 10 or 20% input. I like that. Yeah. Like I guess for these, because these apps are designed in a way that they want maximal 
input from you. Yeah. Like that's where they get their data. That's how they make their money. That's how they serve their ads. That's how they do it all. Like, so if you know that and you're like, okay, this is the kind of thing that I think you're right that like an 80, 20 or even a 90, 10 balance is like, mm-hmm. that's the sweet spot where I can use the thing in this modern culture and get what I maybe want or need out of it or get some enjoyment or some use out of it without being sucked in and like doing all this, like the bidding of it, you know? Yeah. 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 Cause sometimes I'm just like on the phone, not doing anything at all that matters and, or like looking through videos and whatnot. And I think about the other times where I've not used it intentionally, like with that, you know, philosophy. And then when you're doing it, you're like, Oh, I'm probably like missing like the, all this stuff or whatever. And then when you're in that, you're like, this is all fucking trash. Like I'm not missing anything. Oh no. And like how many times have you caught yourself for like three hours rolled by and you're like, I've just been like refreshing my Twitter and like seeing what people are like yelling about. Like, and it's like a cycle. You just switch between all the stuff like do do. And then you're like, Oh, that's been like, I've been on that one long (laughs) enough. Now I could go back to this one and see what's going on. I know. And it's not, I mean, like I said, it's not all bad. Like there are times when I'm very tired or something or it's like, I'm watching like sports or something on Sunday and like, I don't know, it's not hurting, you know, and it's like fine. There's times where like I have to, you know, I think there's something I've learned too is like I have to give myself some permission to like play a video game, do some lazy dumb shit. But there's definitely most times or most after I do it, I'm like, man, I could have been like hanging out with my like dogs. My wife is here. Like we could go somewhere, you know, like I have friends or I have Mm. like, there's the sun outside and it's like shining and like it's just time from like yeah. damn dude i'm gonna be like super old and close to death someday and i'm gonna be super bummed if i just like checked everyone else's you know what their thoughts were on twitter that day when like right yeah i don't know no yeah. i think that's i'll have to check out the cal newport because i have heard that mentioned on like other mm. podcasts and stuff and i, I yeah should, he's dope that's a good re- recommendation um i wanted to ask you a little bit too about some of the style that you work in with like the clutch stuff to me, um, what really caught my eye about it is it's very reminiscent of kind of, you know, rough screen printing and like kind of this punk zine like style stuff that I really enjoy and both creating sometimes as well as looking at, but what kind of gravitated you towards that style or like, what are some of your maybe inspirations for working that way? Yeah, uh, the main one is uh, Tooth. This guy, he's my friend now here. I met him in that schoolhouse thing. Mm -hmm. So like up to that point, I was like finishing college, doing that like one year project where I was just trying to like doodle or draw or make something every day, you know? Yeah. Um, And I was like mostly thinking like, I should be an illustrator. Like I'll, I'll learn to draw better. I'll start practicing, like emulate some people I like, figure out how, you know, get the line work figured out. Like that was kind of my jam. And then I met this guy, his name's Dale Flatham, and he goes by Tooth. Um, I feel okay. like me, yes, even mentioning this guy, you're gonna be like, "Oh, this is where like all the, all the Kludge ideas, like basically," because he's got like you know like the one word like nickname thing too, and like, but um, I saw his, I met him, and he's a super sweet, amazing person, and he's a good friend now, first and foremost. But then okay. I saw his work, and it's all this old black and white zine and like punk flyers and all this stuff Mm -hmm. and it's you know mostly collage based some of it's illustrative but a lot of it's you know just pulling old things out yeah Um, yeah. but he was doing it too like he's he used to be in this band called steel pole bathtub when he was younger out of montana (laughs) and they were like you know playing with like nirvana and stuff back in like the late 80s early 90s or whatever and like Mm -hmm. he's like in he's like i feel like the I don't know, I try not to think of like, oh, I was born in the wrong time or something. Cause I think that's just like a stupid idea. Like everybody's time is fine. I don't know, you could do whatever you want. But, right. but he's, you know, he did all that stuff that I think I grew up getting into punk music and like through skateboarding and all this stuff I got into in the art and everything. Mm-hmm. He was actually like there doing it in this like way of like in these bands, making these flyers, like posting up, yeah. going to these shows, driving in a van. Like everything I dreamed about as a kid, but never actually did, just like read about it, you know, and looked at it mm-hmm. and listened to the music and all this. But anyway, I, I saw his work and sort of figured out like, oh, how he, you know, kind of saw him work and talk, was able to talk to him directly. And I was just like, oh, this is it. Like, this is all I want. Like this, yeah. 
black and white it's photocopy texture like weird crumpled up uh posted you know just like there's such a especially those old punk flyers it's like the most real form to me or like the most like urgent form of graphic design of like yeah. it's just these like fucking 18 year old kids in their towns like that started some crazy punk band and they want to scream and yell and play guitar and drums and they got a show booked at whatever like little place and they want their the town you know they want 10 people to show up so they just we need a flyer like we got to put yeah. our band name on this thing and we need like what else do we need we need to know people need to know it's super gnarly so we need like some crazy imagery or like skulls or something on it Mm -hmm. And it's just like the most beautiful, pure form of like art and design to me of like, they weren't, I don't know, they weren't trying to be influencers like, you know, we all are now or whatever, like the, yeah. uh, they just wanted people like come to that show and like, we need a gnarly rad flyer with some super cool text on it. Yeah. I love that. So I, anyway, so Dale was the one that really got me thinking of like, oh, that's what I should try to do is start playing with this stuff. And then, I mean, I guess it's just like for the moment it's still the stuff that gets me the most you know that feeling you get when you see somebody else that's made something yeah and you're like oh i love that and i want to go make something now myself mm -hmm. that's still the stuff that like makes me feel that the most and yeah. i assume that someday that might change as i get older but maybe not i don't know but like for the moment i guess i just try to like keep that as the most simple basic idea of like I don't know, whatever gets me the most fired up, like just keep, just do that. And just right. like, I don't know, it's arbitrary what like, there's a billion different artistic styles or mediums I could choose at any given moment. And so it doesn't really matter. And if this one's like the one that gets me hyped, I'll just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I always, uh, you know, not always, like not everything, but there's maybe five to 10 types of design or, art styles that I enjoy and, and somewhere live in between all those on like a threshold. But I always have to watch out for myself. Cause like every time I see something, I think that I really like, I'm like, damn, like I just want to do this shit for now on, you know, or like, yeah. oh, I just want to do this or like, I don't feel that way with things that I'm not like good at. Like I don't ever look at yeah. like super realistic illustration and think like, I wish I could do that. Cause I just, I don't really care to. And I know I'm not very good at it, but yep. when I see things that look like I maybe could have thought of them or could have made them, I'm like, fuck, like maybe I should just be doing that from now on. Or, and well, I get more, so, uh, it's hard to stay in the yeah. same thing though. I get bored. I don't know. It's weird. I do too. I will say like, I feel pretty good about like, overall I've locked into like that style and that look and yeah. like going just like, that's what I'll do is my main thing. And I'm pretty good, but I still do that thing where every day I see somebody doing something and I'm like, damn dude, I just need some like massive, like 12 foot canvases and I'm going to pour buckets of paint on. I'm like, or what? Like, yeah. I'm like, maybe that's, that looks way more fun than what I'm doing today. But a lot of that's just like, I'm bored today or I'm like, I don't know, like procrastinating on something. And I'm just like, I don't know. Usually when I get back to it and like getting that book good flow, I'm like, Oh no, I like my own art. Like it's, yeah. I don't know. it's, it's a good spot to be. <laughs> I was looking at this dude's stuff and it's really dope. I could see like some of the similarities and things. And there's probably like five or so people that I follow that are similar to that and stuff you do. And, but I, one thing I was watching one of your, uh, uh, stories where you were showing like how you do some of this stuff. And I was curious if you could explain a little bit more about how you work with like, cause you're basically getting these whatever images, right. Processing them into the style that you yeah. want them to be in. And then you're printing them on like a label <laughs> maker. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's just like thermal labels. It's so stupid. It's another yeah. one of those things where like, I like doing it. And then as soon as somebody asks me about it and I start talking, I'm like, oh, this is really dumb, isn't it? But um, <laughs> I just like, I don't know. I mean, I've, I work digital sometimes too. Like I have, you know, I'm on the computer. Like I went to design school, like right. for fuck's sake. Like I know, how this, you know, like how to open Photoshop and make stuff and illustrate it. Uh -huh. So there's like some components of that, but I try to keep it more and more analog, especially the last couple of years, I've really just been like trying to, I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm also trying to not 
get stressed out when I'm not analog because I get I don't want to get like mad at myself like I do sometimes. Right. I'm like you're making it on the computer. You like this isn't the real thing. <laughs> like that's yeah. I've been feeling that sometimes. <laughs> I'm trying to like not worry too much either way. But um, the thermal labels, I started doing that. I mean, I got a thermal label printer just to do shipping labels, like to try to like right. make more stuff and mail it to people and, um, you know, through the internet. But then I quickly realized, I was like, this thing prints super fast. And I yeah. think so much of who I am is like, I'm very impatient and I like to go like super quick. Like I love, I know I honestly have like a big thing about how speed and hurrying through something can in the right use in the right way can enhance artwork or music mm. or anything like there's ways in which i think that's really interesting so and i guess it just fits who i am like i'll just try to just do this like super fast and be done like let's and it's like a laser <laughs> printer kind of right basically um but it just comes out like on those that long sh- long yeah it's sheet just like, of it right mine are just like little like yeah they're like four by six inch little yeah. labels and it just heats up the paper and that's what makes the black so it's not any ink or anything. And I feel like it's those are like uh, efficient in terms of the amount of prints you can make on that versus like an inkjet or something. It's super cheap and fast. And I just, I mean, I'm always tinkering with that stuff of like, I've for years like played with, okay, I'll just cut it right out of the magazine and like paste it down and then scan it in and then reprint it or whatever, mm-hmm. you know? But then sometimes I think I realize I really like working in black and white like there's an orderliness to that for my brain that feels really good of like do all the design in black and white and then color after. Mm -hmm. And I know some people that work very much like color is an integral part the whole way through and like different styles. But like, I love the idea. I don't know. There's something about like, if it's made in black and white, it's like, well, it's already awesome now. And like, now all I got to do is just like put some polka dots of color somewhere or something. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. know. It just feels easy to me and it feels nice. But I've always just like played with, yeah, do I cut it right out of the magazine or do I scan it in and then print it out and have multiple copies of it so I can try different variations of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then I started playing with the thermal labels just because I like really, I think I like the sound it makes too. Like when it prints, it comes out real fast and makes like a sound. Um, So I think that just like makes me happy. But I just, I think I realized like it did something to the work, like when I'm like journaling or just messing around and making stuff in the morning for fun is it's like so fast. Cause before I would print it on paper and then like have to glue it by hand down or tape it yeah. and having it on a sticky label already with the adhesive. And so I just was like, how fast can I just like rip these and slap them down? And there's something about not giving myself time to think about it. That keeps me from like either not making anything. Cause I'm like too scared to do mm-hmm. anything or being way too careful. And then my work looks really like stiff and controlled. Yeah. And there's always a balance of that. I'm trying to like figure out as I work and like, what do I like best? But yeah, the thermal labels have been really fun lately to just, I'm like, they're super cheap. They print super fast. If I screw this Mm -hmm. up, I can print more and try it again. It's a good idea. uh, Cause sometimes I have a, a laser printer, which is, similar i think in the way it works because it's not ink ink either necessarily but uh printing only in black at first was like frustrating me and then it i think increased my skills a little bit because it limited like you know the composition and things has to be a lot better when you're not using color more as like a crutch and you can kind of add it add it in later or whatever Uh, i still with that being said i still want to get a different printer that prints color for so do what i want but I have some labels that I print on this for when I ship out prints that are just uh, normal paper size. Then I just cut them to to scale. Okay, but yeah, yeah. now that I'm when I saw you do that, I was thinking like, damn, if I print them on this, I don't have to fucking glue it and all that. So Dude, that may it's like work super, fast. Like I said, it sounds so stupid saying it out loud. Cause I'm like, I'm sure like proper good artists and designers are like, the quality of the print is so low. It's like, what are you doing? Like that's that's trash. Mm-hmm. Like. But, but you're already the, like trashing it anyway with like the filter yeah. you're kind of putting on it, right? So well, this just like, goes back to like when we were saying, I was like, that's why I call it a kludge. Like you can't say yeah. nothing. Like it's supposed to be bad. <laughs> but like, yeah. um, no, the thermal, like it's, I think it just goes back to, too, like when you're a little kid and you get some stickers, like mm-hmm. I, you know, I was into skateboarding. And so like anytime you get like stickers with your skateboard or like at the skate shop, it's like, that's the best, like in putting stickers on stuff that you own. Yeah. I mean, I still like stickers. I not even just when I was a kid. Like they're still awesome. 
Yeah. And so it's just a form of like my process that I was like, ooh, I get to play with stickers and just like mm-hmm. sit like cutting them with scissors or exacto knives and sticking them down. Like even if I don't make anything, like there's times in the, I've done it where I've just like taken and, and like not or just like covered up a page with like a bunch of black nothing and just like done a bunch of rips and just slapped them down. I'm like, this just feels nice. Like yeah. it's I always try to remember that like yes, I can get super obsessed with the actual art that I'm making and like the style and what it says and these words and there's all like I love that stuff. But I always try to remember too that so much about what's great is like cutting things with the scissors has like a really nice little sound and it feels good to do and like mm-hmm. or ripping something like just the actual physicality and the motions and then yeah like sticking down a sticker and sticking something on top of it and i think i like like how fast it changes like mm-hmm. i can cover up half this person's face with this weird you know like monster i found from something print like and it's just like that quick you change the entire thing right. i don't know i just I think yeah. there's something to be said about the process that is, you know, sometimes more enjoyable than the outcome, regardless of what happens. It's kind of fun to just, and like, I've been working more analog or at least integrating it somewhere into the workflow. And there's something like nice about that versus I like working on the computer and it, it does uh, without the computer, I probably wouldn't exist, you know, cause I'm not that like talented to create <laughs> everything from scratch. But, uh, you know just messing around in the computer when you just fuck around and like not really figure anything out in the computer it just feels like you like wasted all this time and then when like you do nothing, it in person yeah. there's something there at least you're like whatever there's definitely something i mean i i think i've been trying to like like i said i still use the computer i do it at my obviously at my job i use the computer because i kind of gotta right um, but even in my own stuff i'm trying to like not shy away from like use it for what it is it's a good tool mm-hmm. but yeah there's times where i'm like trying to just do like clutch stuff on the computer only for hours. And I just, I don't know, like, I mean, I guess if, if you zoom out and just think of like, well, what did you do that day? Did you like get your hands dirty and like spill some ink or like paint? Or did you like brush paint onto paper? Or did you like sit still with your hands in front of you and look at a little like screen lit box? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think I, it's like really obvious when you think about it, but I always forget. I'm like, well, I did all this stuff. And it's like, well, no, you just stared at that. Like, sometimes I try to think about, like, what did I do that day from my the perspective of my dogs? Mm. And it's like, if they were watching me that day, like, I might have gotten so much work done that day or made so much art all on the computer, but they would have just seen me like, yeah, like, dad just sat in his stupid chair again and just stared at that dumb box and ignored me all day and didn't play fetch. Yeah. You know, and so I try to think of things from, like, that basic or a different perspective of, like, at least, yeah, if I don't get anything, like, productive. But, I like, I don't know, it felt nice. I was cutting stuff. Like, I changed something in the world today. Like, I, I mm-hmm. ripped up all the papers in my office and, like, glued yeah. them onto something else. I guess that's, like, useful. For sure. Are, are you just, um, like, is it just a uh, kind of, what do you call it? I guess filter for lack of a better word word that you kind of created for that you put these images through that makes them like that kind of threshold like stamp look is it just something you kind of discovered and you were like I'll just use this on all the images that I source pretty much I mean I I use like the Photoshop filter stamp and then I just adjust the thresholds to get it to a point I like and you just Which bulk is, process yeah. that, right? And then print everything out pretty much? I have, yeah. And not always. I, I've done that a f- like a good number of times. Mm-hmm. I know I've shown on my Instagram where I like, if I really take the time and yeah, like get a hundred images or like here's a bunch of words I think would be interesting to play with and here's a bunch of images. And yeah. I like made automated like, which was smart. I should honestly do that again. I just haven't done it lately, but because I was like sitting there thinking, now, this part where I have to like upload all the images into the computer and then go and individually like click these buttons. I'm like, this is boring. I don't like this part. Right. So I was like, well, if I just create like a, an action in Photoshop and some of them don't turn out, but whatever, I was like, at least it was kind of like, a, well, my computer's a robot. So like, let the robot do the work that I don't right. want to do and let it come out on this little printer and then I'll go do my thing. <laughs> it seems like the, you know, I've, I've, I've done different things to create different effects on images that look anywhere from something like you're doing to 
even maybe more detail and, and whatnot, but it seems like a lot of the stuff you've used, like whatever image you started with originally, like the stampified version, like turned out pretty good. Like sometimes I mess with that stuff and it looks like shit, like none of the details <laughs> get preserved. So I'm like, mm, I don't even know if I could use this this way, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've definitely had that happen sometimes. I will say like, I, I've looked a lot at your stuff. Um, and you are like amazing at getting those textures and like these different, you know, whether it's old poster or old flyers and paper stuff that you do. Like it looks so Thank real you. and good, dude. I don't Appreciate think I have that. those those abilities at all other than like I can download some like textures and like put them over my photos, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I oh. guess uh, <laughs> that's like, it's good to hear. It's like what you said about the... Um, using uh when i was telling you like i like the sketch shit like it's it's nice to for someone to say those things because you just like do shit and you're like fuck i don't know like (laughs) hopefully they like this or whatever hopefully this is a shit you know and like uh it's crazy to look back even you know every year you look back and you're like damn i actually actually am getting better you know totally i mean i that's always a nice feeling when you do stop and take stock of things and be like Mm -hmm. oh yeah i like i wanted to learn that thing and i did or like i I got better. I used to struggle with this and like, actually I feel pretty good at that now. And I think just, I mean, for me, I know that I'm always like thinking too hard about the stuff I wish I could do or that I'm not good at yet. So it's yeah. always nice to be like, stop and pat yourself on the back once in a while. If you're like, don't do that <laughs> often enough. Um, one thing I just, I thought of when you were saying, um, talking about like working on the computer versus analog, something funny that I've found that I didn't expect from trying to do more and more artwork with just whether it's thermal labels or printing on any printer or cutting on a magazines and like learning to basically do design that way just with physical stuff mm-hmm. is that those same skills still translate back to the computer. Sure. And like I find myself like I got better at a certain thing or like I guess got better isn't even the right. It's like I found a niche that I like or a routine or like a, a layout that I like a lot, you know, and like I stuck with it for like, yeah. you find your little tendencies that you think are like, this is kind of like, I like that one. That, that'll be in my repertoire now. Mm-hmm. And then I always like, I'll do a analog and then I start doing something on the computer later. And I realize I start doing that same thing on the computer, like in Illustrator or Photoshop that I was mm-hmm. doing on by hand. Some things are harder. Like I can't rip paper as easy on the computer, but like, layout and placement or like things I've like, oh, I kind of figured out that this looks good the way if you shift it to the right, or this is Mm -hmm. a little crooked, but that like, you know, if I have like, I always look at a lot of like, if this line's crooked this way, this one can't be straight, but it can't be crooked. It's got, you know, like they like know each other. Like you find all these little, I don't even like put proper label. I can't explain them half the time well enough, but you have them in your head as you work, like they come out. And yeah. I love when you start, I start doing it on like, oh, I can do this on the computer now too. Like it's the same, it's I, all the same. <laughs> I like the, yeah, it's, when I've, I've learned that too with laying out type and things on like analog, something about the angles like that. I kind of look at it like there's a little ball and it has to like roll back and forth oh. on these things <laughs> and like go down. Cause I then like if that. you put it like this, then it just gets stuck. And yeah, like. Yeah. And you're like, that would frustrate me if I was like playing pinball and it like went between right. the levers or something. <laughs> yeah. And it's like you were saying with yeah. just ripping it and sticking it, like sometimes I lay out a maybe like collage type thing and then I didn't, it's not done. Like it's not, uh, what do you call it? Like it's not glued or it's not like stuck. And then I try to like, you know, redo it. And it's like, it looks worse after I try to like glue it down and shit. Cause the t- way I just laid it out originally without touching it too much was way like stronger. Oh, you know? I mean, a lot of what I like, why I like to work on by hand so much too, is that like, it doesn't allow me to do certain things. Like mm-hmm. I think the computer gives me too much power and like, I'm yeah. not responsible enough to handle it. I can't like make all these decisions and like be in charge of, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like this endless ability. Like you could do anything in there. Right. Any style and make anything. They have all the colors. They have all the stuff. And that's Uh why I like to take it offline and be like, I only have the colors spray paints that I bought this week. Like I don't have more. I have to figure Mm -hmm. out what to do. Like I got to just use these. Um, Right. But also it just helps me like, I sometimes, especially if I'm working digitally a lot, I get way too caught up on like, it's got to be one degree to that way, you know? And it's like something no one else will ever know or see. And it's actually probably not making it better or worse. And then Mm -hmm. something about like, well, if I work super tiny in a tiny sketchbook that morning or something with like collage, 
I can't get those angles right because like my eyes don't work well enough and my hands aren't steady enough. So I just got to go. You just got to. Yeah. And that gets back to like why I always think, like I said, those punk flyers that, you know, all these people were making back in the day. I mean, still make some places like, but especially back when like that was how you told people about your show. You didn't have like a Facebook event. You had mm-hmm. like a telephone pole and you had to put your flyers on all of them. Was that like, I don't know, they did, probably didn't have time to sit and worry too much about exactly if it's like the right typeface or if it's right. like angled exactly the right way. It's like they had to get that shit printed off because the show is tomorrow and yeah. I still have to walk around town all day and like staple a bunch of shit to telephone poles. Yeah. Like you just like, I try to always, without having the actual, like I don't have a punk band or a show going on, I try to still get myself to that like place mentally of like, mm-hmm. yo, just slap it down and like make it cool and see if it's good or fun or not. And if you kind of like it, then go like, then go screen print it on something bigger or like put some spray right. paint under it. Like, or they're just to keep laying that shit out on like a scanner at like fucking the coffee place. And the guy's like, hurry the fuck up. We got to get the, like, you totally. got to get out of here. I got other customers or, or they had, um, like I've talked to some guys that used to actually do that stuff is like, they had tricks they could do to like get free copies so they didn't have to pay the like five cents per page or whatever, you know, yeah. like they're like, we knew how to like rig the machine and like just get all the shit we needed for free and bail. Like, Yeah. Some of that, <laughs> my, my favorite part about some of that um, kind of punk like poster flyer stuff was the use of color, like only through the paper, rather like all the Xerox is just black, obviously, but yeah. there was so much like, you know, you'd see like, there's also crossover with like all the old like rave flyers and stuff like with these bright neon greens and like kind of atomic like reds or whatever you want to call them. And it, I'm sure like, it's funny now seeing people like younger and myself included, it's not like I was there in that time when it was happening, but seeing like them recreate that stuff, maybe through Photoshop and digitally and stuff like as like proper design when like this was just some dudes like throwing this shit together and it just happened to be super tight like they weren't going to school for it or anything that's like the that's how that like stuff goes so often though is like the impetus of so much of like the best art just starts off as like it's i mean it's so often like literally kids yeah you know or like as often you know very often i feel like it's like that those teenage years where you're starting to like kind of get good at some stuff Mm -hmm. but you still don't have like a a real career or job you're kind of screwing around with your buddies and like i don't know like that's where you know punk rock starts that's where like hip-hop starts with like young kids like Mm -hmm. just messing around trying some weird stuff and recording it and putting it you know like right and then now yeah it totally like over time becomes like like you said it's funny to see that stuff in the design world like this is professional graphic design now. Like you could get paid yeah. real money by massive like companies and like work for Adidas or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it all started with like, yeah, some weirdo punker kid, like just making his buddies flyers or his own band's flyers. Right. And, like he wasn't thinking about like if LeBron would like this later or not. And like, yeah. down the road. it's like, I hope the people come to our show. I was surprised to see how small some of the stuff you do is like when I saw the pictures of your like little notebooks and things is, is that intentional yeah. the way you work in those little books or is that you just like it like that or. Yeah. Yeah. I usually go, I mean, I have some, sometimes I'll do a little bit more larger size, like a larger notebook or just an eight half by 11 paper. Sure. Um, but I found that, I don't know, I think I learned this from, I guess I've seen, I'd say Zach Hobbs does this really well. Do you know who that is? No, I don't. He, uh, look him up sometimes, Zach Hobbs. He's another like huge influence on me. Um, I don't know him personally. I think we're like internet buddies, I would say. He seems like a super sweet guy as well. But he uh, does that really well where you like, you draw or make something super duper duper tiny. And yeah. then you go and like, either paint it or screen print it super duper big. And there's some magic there where like those little tiny like pencil marks or brush strokes or whatever mm-hmm. that you made real tiny that you can't, you just can't control cause you're like trying to make these tiny little moves and then you just blow those up giant. And it's like, oh, those right. are really cool. I think my main go-to is I like take a, a paper. Like I always try to think about the canvas while I work as being important. Mm-hmm. Cause I used to make stuff where it was like just the positive lines image whatever was the only stuff i thought about and then i was like well 
like with screen printing, it's like that. With paintings, it's like the canvas itself is like an object. It's really informs the whole deal. Or like a skateboard is a shape that's completely different Mm -hmm. than a square, you know, like, so I try to use the canvas as like to my advantage a little bit. But I think I just do the same thing every time where I did it once and I just loved it where I was like, what if I like print out the words that I want on this, print out the image, like print the image as big as possible to fill the entire space. And then Mm -hmm. also print the words as big as possible to fill the entire like space or at least the width. And then the game that I play is you have to make them fit together somehow (laughs) where they're both visible enough in it. Okay. It's like a, I don't know. It's just like a, I literally just make it into games, I guess, but it's like a dumb trick that I found often works to make like something more interesting. But then I do that way too often and I'm like, I have to like (laughs) make smaller type once in a while or something. I don't know. That's like giving yourself, you know, like a, that's like a example of like a good restriction, you know, and that just like fosters more creativity when you have to solve this little problem that you created for yourself where nothing (laughs) fits perfectly to begin with. It's just a dumb little puzzle. But I think, I don't know, like, I think a lot of art is like that. And when I like actually research artists that I love and follow or hear them talk or listen to podcasts, like they'll talk about, if they talk about their process, they often have their own versions of those like little things that are, they're usually Mm -hmm. not like some genius profound invention or like, oh my God, how do you think that way? It's like, yeah, they just have these little, like, I don't know. I just, I I found this once, like I came, you know, or like I, I inserted this piece of it into my little repertoire Mm-hmm. And then that was the final like piece. And then they just keep doing it. And they're like, they get really good at that thing. But I always try to remember, it's like, it's all really doable. Like, I don't know. There's no like genius or like magic that's like comes down from the mountain or whatever. Like gives yeah. these people their powers. It's just like, I don't know. They just like are really into this and they did it a whole bunch. <laughs> right. That's why I like talking to so many people too. Cause it's like, it's like you said too, with the, you know, every once in a while you get another, like, it's like you unlocked another yeah, fucking skill in like your skill yeah. tree in like a video game or something, you know, you're like, Oh shit. Yeah. Now I got, yeah. I just unlocked like the thermal printer <laughs> or whatever. Now I could <laughs> use this and ex- then that opens up this branch of other things that you can, you know, and then you just find the things that work for you and you kind of just chip away at them, make them better and better. And then I guess that's how like a style or whatever is born. I feel like it's, more an accident than anything yeah it's definitely a mix it's like intention plus accident it's like right so much of what i do is trying to like give myself like like you like you you noticed or whatever it's like i'm giving myself a little puzzle or giving myself some restrictions playing these little games and if i just do that often enough and like figure out which little games and puzzles like i want to stick with that i if i like it enough or the outcome was cool and I enjoyed the process. Like, okay, cool. I'm going to do that one again and again and again. Right. And I think eventually you just get like, I mean, I don't know. Some people might have a lot of them and do all sorts of wild stuff. I guess my favorite artist that I try to like emulate or, you know, want to be more like is honestly like the, the artists that just find like one, two, maybe three things. And they kind of find like, that's their little like recipe. Right. And they just kind of do it their whole life. Like they settle in on like, I just love this, like, mm-hmm. and I don't need to like, it's not that they don't grow or expand at all, but I don't feel like they're like, that's their impetus or like, that's what makes, that's not the goal. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just going to keep doing their thing because they love it and it's fun and they like what they're making and they just do it for 50, 60, 70, like, well, you know, till they're old and I don't know. I just, especially where I'm at now, I just like everything to be really simple and I'm like, I'm constantly thinking how can this be like dumber and simpler and easier for like, not just me, but like the audience as well. Just cause I think we have like, I think it's probably just a reaction to like, there's so much input. Like you were saying with the Cal Newport stuff, like we're getting so much coming at us all the time. That's Mm -hmm. probably part of why I'm so drawn to very simple, calm things. And I'm like, oh, this feels like a rest. It's like comforting. I know we're harping about less input, but if you do want more (laughs) input and you want to check out Kevin's stuff, uh, it's e.l.kludge on Instagram. A lot of dope shit. If you don't know about it already, definitely check it out. And thank you again, man, for chatting with me. It was great. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. 
Yeah, for sure. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Peace out.